Hi, hi, hi. Oh my gosh, Seeking Sister Wife is a disaster, and I don't know how kind I can be about it. I, this show, I swear on everything holy, I don't know. I, uh, you could tell me that TLC is just paying everybody to act like this, and I would be like, great, because I can't believe that people are like this in real life. So, whew, if you're new here, hi, my name's Cozy. I like to snark about Sister Wives and reality television shows here on YouTube. I do like to remind you these videos are for entertainment purposes only. These are not facts. They're just opinions about public figures sharing their lives on television for us. So cool. Cool. All right. So let us jump in with the Ryans. Fresh off of being stood up by Desiree, the Ryans are packing for a trip. And they share that Stephanie called up out of the blue, as she always does. And Justin refers to her as a sister wife they've been dating for close to nine months. And he says it was love at first sight when they met. And I would beg to differ, considering that she is constantly pushing you guys off. I don't think she feels the same way that you do. But you know what? Justin, Becky, <laughs> do you. Um, and Justin's like, Stephanie's constantly like, sorry, come see me. And he's ready to just drop everything and go be with her at a moment's notice. And he says, outside of Becky and his family, Stephanie is the one person that he is absolutely in love with. And so Stephanie invited them. And then right before I was like, oh, I think I might actually have to work. But they're going anyway. Justin says, we booked a room and we're going. Because in other times, Stephanie would just melt into his arms. And they're anticipating she's going to be absolutely thrilled to see them. I am pretty sure this is about to end really horribly. <laughs> Justin asked Becky for a uh, chapstick to make sure that his lips are kissable. Gag me. Just gag me. He says that the only reason they spent so much time pursuing her is because they both believe that she is just perfect. She's their age. She had her kids young. And Becky thinks that Stephanie is someone they could grow old with. Listen, the way that they talk about Stephanie, red flags. Justin points out that points out Becky's necklace and is like, oh, did the kids ask about it? And apparently they did because it's a necklace that Stephanie gave to her on their second date. And it's a larger circle and a smaller circle intertwined. It's supposed to mean sisters forever. And of course, Becky's like, for us, it's sister wives. But for someone that Becky professes to just absolutely think is perfect in love, she is very snarky about Stephanie because she calls her and gets really, really upset. She's like, of course, she's not going to answer just like always. Stephanie says there's a friend who would no longer speak to her if she up and decided to commit to the Ryan family. And frankly, I don't know if I'd blame her at this point. But she keeps bouncing back and forth a lot. And Becky thinks that this is a really make it or break it trip for them. She wants Justin to lay down the law because she's just done with all this back and forth stuff. And Justin's like, this might be our last sucker butt move. That's not the word he uses, but it's the word I'm going to use. Who knows? Guys, she's just not that into you, or she really just doesn't want the TV cameras swarming her face. I don't know why you haven't caught on yet. The Ryans claim that this is a yes or a no, and then they finally move on. And he says earlier in the week, Stephanie called and was super gung-ho. Yes, please come visit me. And they called and said, do not come. That's pretty clear to me. Do not come. Do not come. But they're going anyway. And now she's stopped answering calls and texts. This poor woman does not know that they are coming. And Justin just keeps insisting that he's in love with her. Becky says they're ready to break this cycle with Stephanie, and she feels like they've been treated like crap. Becky doesn't want to be without her, but she also doesn't want to be with somebody who doesn't respect the time and emotional effort that they've put into this relationship. And Justin can't decide if they're being played or if Stephanie's just really busy. And on the way, they stop and renew Stephanie's gym membership because she loves the gym and hasn't been able to go for a while. And so they're trying to butter her up to make her realize that no one loves her the way that they do. He admits they love her so much and they're always buying her things. And a picture is starting to emerge. A picture of these two are nuts, but Stephanie might not be as squeakly, squeaky clean as she's leading us to believe. Listen, he is pretty sure this is going to get rid of any round of doubt that she may have in her head. So they decide to go to her house and see if her car is there. Justin's like, yeah, it sounds crazy, but I told Becky I was in love with her, and we've been together for 26 years. And I told Stephanie that I was in love with her, and I intend to be with her the same way that I'm with Becky. All of these people are awful. I'm just going to go with that. They're all terrible. So they have shown up at Stephanie's house, uninvited and unannounced. Becky's going to just go knock on the door, and they cut, they do cut this off. As soon as somebody answers the door, Becky's standing out in there in the rain, just ringing the doorbell, and as soon as somebody answers... Show ends. Thanks, TLC. Thankfully, it'll be on really quickly for me because, um, yeah, I got a little bit behind. So I'm going to figure out what happened pretty fast here. So, 
let's move on to the Davis family. I'm actually starting to, to have the Davis family grow on me a little bit, and I think this interaction will show you why. At that household, we're jumping right into the fire. April wants a one-on-one -on -one with Danielle, and originally when she says it, I am really hesitant. I'm thinking, there is no way this is going to go well. Danielle is going to come out of this feeling really unheard, feeling really hurt, and especially when April introduces herself as the first wife and the matriarch of the family. She wants to discuss how Danielle's moving out affected the family, and she doesn't hold back, and she's like, I don't think you understand the seriousness of the impact when you left. And from that sentence, I was like, oh, this is going to go really badly. She points out that Danielle got a lease. She sorted out her finances to do that, did a bunch of things without discussing with anybody, without ever talking to anyone about her feelings. And Danielle says, well, I just thought it would be less hurtful to do it on my own. And April says, how do I know you're not going to do that again? It hurt me to see Nick and Jenny hurting, but it hurt even more when I'm trying to brush Vera's teeth and she's looking for you. She won't let me do it because she's so used to you doing it. And Danielle said hearing that just broke her heart because it's one of the things she's very proud to do is take care of the children. It doesn't matter how tired she is, how stressed out she is. She wants to be there helping take care of the babies. And she loves them all, the whole family with her whole heart. And she feels almost awful and she just almost can't forgive herself for feeling like she abandoned her family. And she doesn't want the kids to feel like she abandoned them. And April stops her and was like, you better forgive yourself because I forgive you. She knows that Nick and Jen forgive her too. And they forgive her and they understand. She's like, there is an understanding there. Please forgive yourself and don't carry that guilt. And Danielle says, that's a lot of grace for April to give her. And April says, ultimately, I choose you. You mean more to me than adding another wife to this family could ever mean. We need to slow down on the dating. But I need you to agree with me that you're going to be more open to communicating and talking with me about these issues. Danielle agrees on moving forward. She agrees to be more open with April. And April asks for a promise that you're never just going to up and leave like that again. At least say something. And Danielle gives her that promise. And it feels like they've come to this really good understanding right now. And I actually feel like April is going to stand up with to Nick and Jen and say, you know what? We do need to put a stop to this for a minute. Bye, Graham. Thanks. <laughs> and put the brakes on for Danielle's sake. And she says in the voice, she, she says this in the voiceover, we need to put the brakes on and let Danielle get comfortable first. She says the possibility of Danielle leaving is still there, but she's going to take her at her word. And that's where we leave them. And it actually feels like I can sort of trust that April's being honest with how she's feeling with Danielle. I think that's really good. So we're actually going to go over to the Sayla Houdin family, who we haven't seen in forever. And they're back because it's been several episodes and I was really, really worried that TLC completely forgot that they existed. And these two are actually kind of interesting to me because I don't remember having a Muslim family on other seasons that I've watched at least. And so it adds a new dynamic. Seeing that is always kind of neat because you don't always get to see different things. Please don't chew on your leg. Thank you. Um, but they are all dressed up. Well, not all dressed up, but they are dressed the same. <laughs> they dressed alike to go get flowers to pick up Keisha from the airport. And they are both seem pretty dead sure that she is the sister wife for them. Naeem asks the drive, what if she kisses me? How are you going to react? And Nyla's like, what kind of kiss? Like on the cheek? And he uses a phrase I've never heard, but it sounded super gross. So I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to say a sloppy kiss. And Nyla's like, I'm going to pop you on the forehead because you know better than that. And... I would think that much like other religious groups that have polygamy involved, that there are like intimacy standards, like Islam would have intimacy standards that would have to be, um, you know, uh, worked within the boundaries of, because Nyla is not going to be very happy with Naeem if he breaks those kinds of standards. And they stop this cute little garden shop to get flowers they've ordered ahead of time. And they use these moments while they're waiting for the flowers to discuss the boundaries. And Nyla puts her foot down. There's no way that Keisha is spending the night. In a voiceover, she lets us know that the rules for intimacy and dating, like hand-holding's fine, a hug, a peck on the cheek, those are all okay. But that's where they've drawn the hard line. Essentially, no sexual contact before marriage. Naeem says that he was up front with Keisha, that they'd gotten her a hotel room, and that he had not assumed that he would be able to stay with her while she was there. And I'll give these to this. They have clearly discussed the boundaries as a couple and made very distinct rules for this adventure. Whether they stick to them or not, that remains to be seen, but they have at least tried to make a plan. And Naeem's like, I never even considered trying to stay with Keisha because we don't know her in real life. Like, we don't know her in person. And on the couch, Nyla really agrees. They don't know her yet, and these initial meetings should be between all three of them. 
to kind of create more of a fi family dynamic than just a couple couple dynamic. Naeem's like, I had shared a kiss with a potential sister wife before, and after that, it seemed like that woman sort of lost contact with Nyla and really just wanted to spend all of her time with me. And so this time, they want to take it slow. They want to get to know people. And Nyla's like, that's always in the back of her mind, but I want to drop these walls and just get to know Keisha. And the nice flower lady brings out the flowers and is like, so what's your occasion? Never ask that when, they're, when you're on these shows. Just don't. If you see cameras, don't ask the question. Because Naeem doesn't try to dance around it. He's just like, oh, we're meeting a potential sister wife. And this old lady is like, I don't know what that is. And Nyla politely tries to explain polygamy to her. But this poor woman clearly thinks they're insane. Uh, so they pull her aside. And she's like super honest. She's like, I've never dealt with polygamous people before. And when they ask what she learned today, uh, it definitely looks like she called them a-holes. <laughs> That's... I might be going a bit far. They didn't do anything that would have made me call them that. <laughs> um, and then she's like, I wouldn't deal with multiple people because it's hard enough to deal with just one. That is true. That is true. Nyla reminds them uh, him that there is no going up to the hotel room with Keisha either. Just get her settled and then get back home. Back in the car, a whole mess of texts suddenly start coming in from Keisha. And Nyla says it looks like Keisha's having second thoughts. Keisha is. She's worried about how things are going to go. She's got loose ends to tie up, but isn't sure how long that's going to take. She also needs to find a place to store her car. And as she's staying with a friend currently, needs to move all of her belongings into that guest house before she leaves. Naeem's like, how did you not know any of this until today? We've been talking about this for such a long time. Nyla's like, she's supposed to be in the air. We're on our way to pick her up. They try to call Keisha, but the call doesn't even go through. Nyla is clearly upset, but she tries to remain calm. And when she asks Naeem to stay calm, he says no. And she's like, fine, get riled up, pop off, whatever. And they both say Keisha had never said that she was having any issues getting to them. That yesterday she was even talking about how excited she was to get there and see them. And they thought that they'd found the one and started to create this future in their heads. They were even sending her listings of houses to go look at. So this is really disheartening and devastating to them. Naeem's like, listen, we made reservations. You're still beautiful. I'm still fine as hell. We're going out. So that's the plan. And I think that's a really good way to handle that. You're still beautiful. Let's go to dinner. Like... I think that's lovely. They head out to dinner and Nyla admits that her appetite's really faded. And Naeem's like, because of your mood? And she's like, yeah, of course, because of my mood. Obviously, walking into a date they were intending to share with someone else is going to be disappointing, especially telling the hostess, no, never mind, we only need two menus. Nyla says that Keisha hasn't reached out to them since that morning, and they're upset. They feel like their relationships were great. Keisha and Nyla's and Keisha and Naeem's, they felt like they really connected very well. And Naeem says that in the future, he would much rather meet people face to face um, and, and people who are much closer rather than states away. He's tired of social media. He's like, I feel like you're going to get more of a genuine connection meeting people close to home. Nyla's like, but meeting people on social media is like in a group setting and, and you know people are polygamous because you're in these groups looking for that. And Naeem's like, yeah, but people can say anything online. Are they really polygamous? Because we've been doing this for a while and that's not been our experience. And Nyla's like, I'm so nervous about meeting people in person. She's like, I, I keep going to the super hopeful. I make these friendships and then they just seem to disappear. I And Naeem says, yeah, that's why I wanted to stop because I see what this is doing to you. And she's like, I don't want the actions of some people to taint this whole experience for us, though. And she's like, do we want to proceed with this? And Naeem says, moving forward, we need to do this offline. And that's where we leave these two this time. Let's get into my favorite screaming match, the Merrifields. That blow up over the dating apps has definitely caused tension for the Merrifields. And TLC knows that we're here for it because that's how they started this episode. Danielle is insistent that Garrick has been showing her new people and he is trying to say, you can't see them unless you pay. Okay, if you recall last time, Garrick was arguing that he had a subscription and didn't want to lose his profile and benefits so he didn't delete the app. So you can't see them unless you pay, except last time you told us the reason that you didn't want to get rid of it was because you were paying. So what's going on? Mr. Ick. I'm going to call you Mr. Ick. I think that's a fitting name. You give me the ick. <sighs> In confessional, Danielle's like, Garrick wants to propose and things are going super badly. <laughs> 
Garrick told Natalia he was off these dating sites and surprise, surprise, that was a lie. Of course this is going to start a fight and the biggest problem is Di Danielle is giving what is likely the truth and Natalia may or may not be able to understand anything that she's saying. And Garrick puts it super mildly in his confessional by saying, it looks like, it looks like, uh, it looks bad. Not a good situation. No, really. Did you think that lying to one woman while disrespecting the other one was going to score you some sort of points? Or I genuinely don't know what goes through this dude's head, but he cannot possibly think he is in the right here. I mean, I know he does, but how? Garrett keeps trying to argue he was only responding with old messages and the women are telling him that, that what he already has to know because he's, he's like, oh, well, but, 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 and they're like, no, no, you're still being seen by other women. You're still able to chat with them at any time. He knows this because the act of him going, really? No? is so flat, so tone deaf, so, mm, mm. Danielle's like, active profile or not, He's telling Natalia he's not going to add a third wife until she's in the States. So what is the point of even looking? Because she points out he's been looking. He's showing her different people. So why are you doing that if you're telling Natalia you're not going to add anybody else? And based entirely half of how completely unfazed he is by losing Roberta, I don't think that Garrick actually cares about collecting his wives as much as he does about just chasing a new relationship. We've all had where we've met a new friend and we've gotten that like little bit of a high off of meeting a new friend, off of finding somebody new that we really connect with, that we get to kind of uh, enjoy the, the pursuit of finding out new things about them. Garrick feels that way about his romantic relationships, if you ask me my opinion on it. Whew. Garrick wants that high. He doesn't mind disregarding people. I'm, that's how I feel when I look at him. Danielle wants Garrick to be honest and admit bottom line is he just wants to date more people. Natalia says the problem isn't the app being there necessarily. It's that he is there when she told or he told her it was gone. He says that he understands now, and I am with Danielle when she gives him the snarky, oh, so now you understand? Yeah, of course he does, because Natalia's standing there, and he wants to look great for her. He has shoved everything that she has said to the side and tried to look like such a saint to Natalia, all while making Danielle out to be this, like, crazy person. I hate it, and I really hope that someday Danielle comes to her senses, or at the bare minimum, she is just hanging around for this paycheck, because honestly, this woman doesn't deserve this. <laughs> Garrett keeps arguing that he told her that he didn't shut things down so that he could end things with other people. And in his confessional, he's like, I did what I said. I just didn't take the next step. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? And then he's like, this is how you learn what women think. Oh, you mean how that women think you're going to keep your word when you say you're going to do something? And then when you don't, we get angry about it? Of course. Of course that's how we think. Because anybody would feel disrespected if you lied straight to their face. Oh. His filmy arguments when Danielle calls him out about messaging women he hadn't talked to in months is that, oh, I just didn't want to be rude. Listen, if I haven't talked to you in months, if I haven't talked to you in months and you suddenly message me to be like, oh, goodbye, I'm going to think you're rude. I'm going to think you're a jerk. I'm going to think that there is something wrong with you that you feel the necessity to months later be like, <laughs> goodbye, like some sort of whiny child. Garrick has dug himself a hole and frankly, let the dude keep the shovel. He can dig himself all the way to the earth's core at this point because Natalia is echoing the same thing. You said you hadn't talked to these people in months. Why do you need to, to have this app to say goodbye to them? And of course, he, he is just utterly shocked when Natalia says, I am going to my bedroom. Just absolutely shocked that she needs some space. He just doesn't know. He's like, she just doesn't know me well enough. So... She doesn't understand where I'm coming from. No, mm -mm. no, no. He's like, I was going to propose tonight, but that's not happening. Why does it sound like some sort of weird threat from him? I was going to propose, but your behavior sucks. So he's like Cody Brown with less charisma. If that's possible. The next morning, Danielle is sitting down with coffee, still looking heartbroken, and Garrick approaches her and he's like, I feel really bad. And Danielle says, we're waking up feeling rocky and unsure, and he's like, I should have listened to you. And now Natalia's wondering if I'm a good guy or if I've deceived her. And he says he should be worried about da Danielle and Natalia because he doesn't want to displease them or God. Trust me, sir, that ship has sailed. 
He claims to be committed to them um, and wants and doesn't want to ruin it. And Danielle says he didn't intend to hurt her and Natalia, but he did, and now he wants to fix it. All she can do now is hope Natalia wants to weather the storm when hard times come up in the relationship. Girl, no. This dude is playing you for a fool. He is. Danielle points out how short a time they've known her, and Garrick says he still thinks he should propose, just to show her he's sincere. Uh, what? What? God's, Danielle says that God leads us and we walk together, and Garrick wants to apologize to them, to them both. And that's when Natalia appears and hugs Danielle and wants to know if Danielle is okay. So Garrick, of course, bursts into tears and wants Natalia to know that he should have listened to sister. Reminder that I absolutely hate that he calls Danielle that. And that she was just looking out for his own good. And that Danielle and Natalia are, the more, are more important than anyone else. Natalia's like, I understand, but I, I hope it doesn't happen again. And that you learn to recognize your mistakes. And of course, he's sobbing, saying all this to her. And Danielle jumps in to defend Garrick. Bad book. She's like, he doesn't want to put others before them. He clearly does, and he did. He uh, And he asked them to help delete the app stuff. Natalia's like, how many profiles and apps? And she asks, no translator. I want to try and understand. And they say lots, 10, they think. Natalia thought it was one, and it's 10. She is shocked, and I'm sure pretty angry. Because this fight is far from over, and Garrick is still using that shovel to dig deeper and deeper, claiming they create so many profiles because so many people go on apps to live monogamously. How is that a shock to you? Oh my gosh. He recognizes that Natalia is not happy and has to continue to make some excuses. And Natalia's like, I'm surprised. That's a huge number. Garrick's like, it was unwise. And Natalia, and Natalia wants to know, what else is there you might still need to tell me? Is there anything else? And the way he says, no, not that I can think of, makes me think there is definitely a secret being kept here. Natalia wants to know how Garrick would feel if she did the same thing. And instead of answering, Garrick's like, I feel disappointed in myself because I hate lying. I feel ashamed. Gag me with a spoon. Gag, oh my gosh. He wants to, to show Natalia he loves her, but follows it up with, after some adjustment, we're going to have five wives. So the 10 profiles will be back. She's just going to have to work through that. Natalia, run, run, run far, run fast. Take Danielle with you and just go. I swear, ah. Natalia really drives it home. Do not lie to me again. And Danielle jumps in to defend Garrick again, and Natalia rolls her eyes, like rolls her eyes at her, and says, you always worry about defending him. He has to bear the consequences of his mistakes. So then Danielle immediately defends him again and says she isn't defending him. Natalia agrees to forgive him, and she thinks he understands what he did, but hopes that giving him another chance isn't a mistake. She loves him or she wouldn't even bother. She says only time will tell if he's even come to understand what he did wrong. Garrett quotes David from the Bible when David asked the Lord to cleanse him with hyssop. And he says, hyssop is something you put in a wound to fester out infection. So I guess the Lord needed to fester something out of me. Dude, I, I can't with this guy at all. Natalia rolls her eyes at that just like we all should and just asks no more repeat situations. And that's where those two end. Honestly, Garrick, I swear on everything holy. I just, I can't with you. I don't. I, I can watch this show, but the second that Garrett comes on my screen, like Danielle, not so bad. The second that Garrett comes on, my blood pressure just goes up. I can feel it. I can't stand it. I don't, I just, I don't have words. If you've been here a long time, you have probably heard me stumble and have difficulty speaking, but Garrick has no words for me. I just can't. I can't. He frustrates me. He makes me angry. And I just, I, oh boy. All right, I've said that enough. You guys are probably tired of hearing it. So there you go. That is Seeking Sister Wife Season 5, Episode 5. We are technically caught back up until the next one airs, and then hopefully I won't get that far behind again. But you know what? I'm really far behind on a lot of things. I am a month behind on my temperature blanket <laughs> that I promised I wouldn't get that far behind on. I will show it to you guys, though, because I finally added a new color, and I actually hate it. I think it's really ugly, and I'm very disappointed in myself. But next year, I am going to change my color palette so I will be less disappointed in it. I can't decide if I'm just upset right now because it looks funny or what, but we'll see. At any rate, I want to thank my little co-host, Graham, for coming to join us. Hi. You say hi? He does not say hi. <laughs> um, and I am 
super excited to get back into this. I have a couple of episodes of Sister Wives to finish watching and finish taking my notes on so that I can get those out for you guys. Uh, a couple episodes of My Five Wives to finish watching and get those notes finished on to get those out for you guys. So I'm going to go do that and I will be back shortly with even more uh, just stupid recaps of television shows. So I'll see you then. Bye guys.